So a cover letter should be at a maximum of a page and um, it should be tailored to a um, particular company that you are applying for and um, be very very conscious of the company and the name that you are putting on there because we, we've had um, instances where the wrong company name has been sent to us and it just doesn't give a great first impression it's just really good to show that attention to detail. When it comes to a cover letter it actually does depend on which job you're applying for. For example if you're applying for a communicative role, um, customer service facing or something to do with marketing and communications, you should probably try and have a lengthier cover letter than something that's more technically based. I think a good benchmark is about half a page if you can, but no longer than a full page if you've got a lot to say. Uh, a cover letter should be approximately one page long, so similar to your CV if it's too short um, it will show a lack of detail and effort, if it's too long you can get lost in all of the detail, um, or, it, or it might come across as a bit waffly. We kind of want you to be clear and concise while also giving us enough information to see that you've put the effort in. Um, the best structure for a cover letter should, from my opinion, include four steps. That would be the opening, so tell us about the job that you're applying for and why. Uh, the next would be why you, so talk to why you think you're suitable for the job and as well as the skills that you have um, in order to do the job well. Uh, the third step would be why PwC, so what attracted you to the role and why do you want to work in this role and work for PwC. And then finally end it off really strongly by reaffirming your skills uh, as well as your enthusiasm for being a part of the process. So for us, I like to see um, in your structure of your cover letter, you introducing yourself, so who you are, um, what you studied, uh, what role you're applying for. Uh, secondly, um, we'd like to see that you've done some research into main freight. Um, shows us that you've, you know, you've put some effort in and you actually know who you're applying for. The third part would be why main freight. So you've done the research and what has come out of that that makes you want to apply for us and for um, why you're a good fit, so skills, values, goals, how does that all kind of filter into that role in the company. So your cover letter is essentially a summary of your CV. It needs to be short, quick to read, but it's essentially your argument for why the recruiter should read on further. A few years ago, prior to my time at Deloitte, I had a gentleman apply for a role. He had no relevant experience really, he worked in the States in customer service um, and it was for a retail job but his cover letter was so well done and so impressive that we got him in front of the manager for an interview and he went on to be top salesman within three months of being with the business. So um, I put a lot of stock in a cover letter but it can't just be a regurgitation of your CV. Tell us something different about you, um, sell yourself that way. I think genuinely there actually is an imperfect structure for a cover letter. I think the difference between a good and a bad cover letter is how well you've explained where you're coming from and why you've applied for that role and why you're the right fit. If it's a long cover letter, if it's a short cover letter, that's perfectly fine. But if you can convey to me that you're the right person for this role and you want it genuinely because of what it is and who we are, you'll always stick out more than someone who's done a generic print off from the internet. Um, when it comes to addressing your cover letter, realistically, if you're a successful candidate, it's going to be viewed by a lot of people, and that's a good thing. So if you address it to, say, the recruiter, whether that's myself or Siobhan, or the recruitment team, that's perfectly fine. We're not going to hold that against you. And I think as a company, we don't really get hung up on formalities when it comes to exactly who it's addressed to, so that shouldn't be something you worry about. However, the people that will read your cover letter, hopefully, uh, if you're successful. It'll start off being just the recruitment team and then from there we will send your application out to the other team leads. So everybody really gets to have their say in who becomes next part of family when it comes to Zero. Always remember when you're creating your cover letter 
to tailor it to the employer that you're applying for. You can use the cover letter to highlight the strengths that are relevant for the role and make sure you tie in the job description with your cover letter. Um, so I guess just additional points for students to know throughout the CV cover letter process. Um, it's really good for us to have it um, neatly laid out, so you know, black black font, um, keep it simple, things like that, keep it clear, keep it concise, try to avoid any crazy fonts or adding loads of colours or things like that. Um, you want it to be, it is a professional document and you know you do want that to come across as your first impression um, that we get of you as a candidate, so just bear things like that in mind. So some other things that a student needs to know is again proofread, it's really important to make sure that your spelling and your grammar and punctuation are all correct. Also personality, so if you can put an anecdote or something in there to say um, why main freight is a good fit for you or something quirky about yourself that makes you kind of um, leap off the page, that's always fantastic. Um, and also make it personal, so if you can find the name of the recruiter, um, it shows that you've gone a little bit beyond just the um, surface level research, you've taken the time to, to make it personal to the person who will be reading your CV. Don't copy and paste directly from the company website. Read the company website, but don't copy and paste from it because we know what we've put on the company website and if we've read it from your cover letter, we've read it from 500 others. Grammar check. Make sure that one, you are spelling zero right with an X, not a Z. Two, that you're not spelling accurate wrong. Um, and also, if you're actually applying for the right company, I can't tell you how many times I've seen cover letters where they've at some point in the letter, they're using somebody else's name, and it's such a shame. I understand it, but it's also such a shame. So <laughs> try and be as accurate as possible, and if you need somebody else to read over it, get your mum and dad to read over it, it'll be fine. Every year <laughs> during graduate round, we get a number of students who copy their cover letter for each of their applications and use the same one. And the reason we know that is because we generally have a competitor's name on the cover letter. Um, that's it, your, your process is over. The attention to detail required for doing a cover letter is key. So make sure you're addressing it to the right company. If you have met somebody at an event, make sure you mention them, name drop. You've met somebody in an event that's really important to us, so it shows that you've gone along and you've spoken to people um, who work for Deloitte currently, and the reason you're applying to this particular service line is something that you've thought through and reasoned and, and got some research done on. Another thing that you should do with your cover letter is that read it out loud, make sure it makes sense, and once you're sure it makes sense, get a number of other people to read it. Your attention to detail, your grammar, your spelling, all need to be just right. So don't let yourself down by not doing these really, really simple things that can mean the difference between you getting an interview with us and not. Mm -hmm.